Hey everyone, welcome to another video on this channel. In this video, we are going to revisit GitOps on Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes. For those paying attention, you probably have seen other videos about Azure Arc on my channel. Azure Arc is all about hybrid cloud. So you can take any compute, servers, and Kubernetes clusters running anywhere outside the Azure data center that can be on premises, in a co-location, in a data center somewhere, another cloud vendor, it doesn't matter. You put an agent on that compute and you can then visualize, manage, organize across those environments. That's one thing that Azure Arc does in a nutshell. The second thing, and that's the thing we are concerned about in this video, is the at scale Kubernetes app management. So across these multiple Kubernetes clusters that you Arc enable, deploying software to it, in this case, of course, with GitOps. And a third aspect of Azure Arc is more the data services aspect. So the ability to run Azure SQL or Postgres outside the Azure data center, as long as it's running on Kubernetes. The focus of this video is on demonstrating how GitOps works on an Azure Arc enabled cluster. But before we do that, a little bit of context. If you've not heard that much about GitOps, what is it all about? Well, first of all, it's about deployment. We're going to use it in this case to deploy to our Kubernetes cluster. We are not concerned with how you get from source code to container image here. Then when you do your deployments, you're going to do it fully declaratively. So you're going to use YAML manifests that are stored in a Git repo. So you have a fully data driven approach here. There is no traditional pipeline where you're going to execute commands. We don't do that. Now, what we also want to do is we want to have the state in Git to as close as possible match the state on our cluster. That's why we are using a schedule to continuously look at the Git repo, pull it down and reapply it to the cluster. You decide on the schedule, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, that's your choice. That also means that if you make manual changes on your cluster, they will get overwritten within that schedule that you set. By the way, it's also possible to work based on an event. So for example, when the contents of your Git repo changes that you automatically and directly update your cluster. Now compared to a traditional pipeline approach that uses a push model in most cases, where you have to also configure the external system with credentials to your cluster, GitOps uses a pool model. The pool model is made possible by running software inside your cluster, and that software is called a GitOps operator. Now that GitOps operator is giving the necessary access rights using Kubernetes role-based access control. Know that Microsoft is using Flux v1 in the current implementation of GitOps on Azure Arc for Kubernetes. Flux v1 today is in maintenance mode, so there are no new features coming out because the newest version is Flux v2. Flux v2 is a much improved version over Flux v1. That means that today, if you're using GitOps with Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes, know that that version will have to be replaced soon. So I do recommend to get your hands dirty a bit and knowing how it works, but do not implement it in production uh, today. A preview with Flux V2 support is supposedly coming soon. Now let's take a look how it works today. Here I am in the Azure portal and I have a view on a dashboard that shows my Kubernetes services running on Azure in my subscription. And as you can see, I have no Azure Arc enabled cluster. I just have a plain Azure Kubernetes service cluster running natively in the Azure cloud. However, I do have a cluster running in Sivo's cloud, so outside of Azure. Sivo is using the K3S distribution and the API endpoint of the cluster is external. So it's publicly uh, available for me to connect to from my, uh, my machine here, for instance. This cluster simply has three nodes deployed. 
Now, if we look at the cluster from a bit uh, a bit closer, uh, for example, I have, I'm connected here. I can see indeed with the k get nodes command or kubectl get nodes, I can see the three k3s nodes that are running and ready at Seagulls Cloud. And with k9s, we can get a view on what is running on that cluster. There's a pretty bare bones cluster. Nothing specific has been installed yet. So we have to go ahead and install the Azure Arc agent on this cluster. Let's get the Azure Arc agent installed on the K3S cluster. Now you can just run a Azure CLI command for this, but if you're not sure about the command, just go from the list of Kubernetes services in the portal, click add, and then register Kubernetes cluster with Azure Arc. And you'll get this wizard here. Be aware there are several prerequisites that have to be met. So the Azure CLI has to be installed. You have to install some extensions to the Azure CLI. There's a link to how you have to do that. Helm 3 needs to be installed, best the latest version on your machine. And of course, kubeconfig has to be configured so that you can connect to your cluster with cluster admin permissions with the kubectl command. You've seen me run the get nodes command earlier, so I know I am connected properly to this cluster. Now in the cluster details, yeah, we know we're going to create an uh, Azure Resource Manager uh, object. So we have to have a resource group and I'm going to specify here, we're going to call the cluster Arc Demo K3S and have that object in West Europe. There is no proxy server between the K3S cluster and the internet, so I don't have to configure that. In the tags, there are some preset tags, some physical location tags. For example, here I can specify the data center is Sivo and the location is London. But of course, you can add custom tags as well. And then there's the run script, either bash or PowerShell, but the commands are the same. I'm not going to run as login and as account set because that is done already in my case. So I just need to copy this command over here. So we're copying this and now we can go to verification. Here, we verify that the cluster is created, but of course it has not been created yet in Azure. We first have to run that command and then retry the verification. Let's paste that command here and let's see what happens when we run this. So yes, we have to ensure we have the latest Helm version before proceeding. I'm gonna pause this here and when it's finished, I'm gonna come back. The command has finished running and as you can see, a object of type Microsoft Kubernetes Connected Cluster was uh, created here. Now, what must have happened is the installation of the agent on the cluster. So we can go to our K9S tool and see what happened. And indeed, we now suddenly see a namespace on the cluster called Azure Arc. And the Azure Arc agent is a collection of several pods running in that namespace. I'm not going to go through the details of what each of these pods do. That is very well documented in the Microsoft documentation. Now, with this Azure Arc agent installed, we can retry the verification in the um, wizard. And indeed, you can now see that that object is created in your uh, Azure Resource Manager. Let's go to the cluster. And here you see indeed the cluster is available as a Kubernetes Azure Arc resource. If you go to your Kubernetes services, you now see when I refresh this list, you see a regular AKS cluster, Kubernetes, Kubernetes service, and then Kubernetes Azure Arc. So that's it. Let's take a look at how we do the GitOps configuration. With the agent installed on the cluster, it now reports back information to Azure Resource Manager. We can see the distribution there, the last connectivity time of the agent, the agent version, and so on. Now we can do all sorts of neat things with Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes, like for example, monitoring and so on. But in this case, we're focusing on the GitOps integration. So to do the GitOps integration, you either click here or you click on the GitOps links that you see there. A GitOps configuration is exactly what it says. It's just information stored in Azure Resource Manager that tells the agent on the cluster what to do. In this case, it tells the agent to install the Flux operator and to configure the Flux operator. Now you can have multiple configurations where each configuration has access to only the namespace where the Flux operator is configured or you can have a global uh, configuration. Now let's add such a configuration and I'm gonna use this global uh, configuration here. So I'm just going to call it cluster config. Every configuration name 
needs a name, right? This is the instance name of the Flux operator. You can call it what you want. I'm just going to call it cluster config as well. And the Flux operator has to be installed in a Kubernetes namespace. Now, I don't want this operator to only have access rights on the namespace where it's installed. I want the operator to have access rights to the entire cluster. Now, I'm going to skip for now the operator parameters. I will show that later. But the most important configuration information here is, of course, the Git repository URL that contains all our YAML files, our YAML manifests that we want to use to install things on our cluster. Let's take a look at that repository. This is the configuration repository we are going to use with our GitOps configuration. It is a private repository, so I'll have to provide the GitOps operator the necessary credentials to connect to this repo. This repo only contains YAML manifests. It does not contain the source code to my applications. That's in different repos. That's the best practice when you're using GitOps. So the deployment manifests in this case are in a folder called deployment and a subfolder called go app. It's a very simple deployment because that's not the point of this video. The deployment installs a container image, which is this one. In uh, GitHub container registry, there is a go template 1.0.6 image. Now, we need to provide a URL of some sorts for the GitOps operator to connect. Now, you have the option to use HTTPS if you want to, right, and access it using a username and a token, but you can also use SSH and use an SSH key pair. We're going to use this approach. I'm going to copy this. URL. I'm going to use that in my GitOps configuration. We are back in the GitOps configuration and I already pasted the repository URL in the uh, text box over here. So we know it's a private repo. We decided to authenticate using SSH. And of course, that means we need SSH keys. You either use your own private public key pair. And in that case, you'll have to paste in the private key here. Now, I will select to let Flux, the operator, generate the SSH keys, and then we'll pick up the public key afterwards when it is installed. Now, instead of actually using add and adding the GitOps configuration this way, I'm going to show you how to do it with a command instead. To create a GitOps configuration using the command line, you just use the Azure CLI again, but in this case, with the Kubernetes configuration extension and then the create command of that extension. The parameters that I used in the UI are basically matching the parameters you see here on the screen. What I didn't show in the UI was the operator params parameter, right? With operator params, you can specify parameters that need to be set on, in this case, Flux. So we tell Flux with the git pad parameter to only use the deployment folder in my git repo and all the subfolders of that. We also tell the GitOps operator to do a polling every one minute for uh, changes to the Git repo and apply these every one minute. The branch is main in my repo. And I also specify the Git user and the Git email. Uh, that's important when you want to allow Flux to also write to your repository. And there's a reason why we do that. And I'll explain that later. So let's just create a configuration using uh, this uh, command. We just press enter and this goes quite fast because this is just information in Azure Resource Manager. Uh, let's go back to our cluster representation in the portal and refresh the configurations. What we see here now is indeed that it is pending. So the operator is being installed on the uh, cluster and we have to give it some time for it to do that. You can of course refresh here and see what happens. What you can also do is you can go back to the command line, in our case to K9S, for instance, and see if something is changing on our system. For example, you see that the agent is installed, but in a moment, and that's now, good timing, we see that the cluster config namespace is added. This is the Flux operator, which I also called cluster config, and this is a dependency, memcached is a dependency of uh, Flux. Now, if we are looking in the uh, cluster config uh, pod, and we'll give it some time to start running uh, and hopefully 
start up correctly. I'm going to look at the, uh, the logs here, and then I'm going to search for Git in the logs. And what I'll see here is things like, for example, the Git repo is not ready. And indeed, that's an issue. We cannot connect to the Git repo because we don't have the SSH key pair configured properly. So what can we do now? Well, normally this means that the operator is installed. That should also mean that here in the GitOps config, the operator state is installed. When we click on the operator state, what we see is information about the operator. We can see the operator parameters again. We can view at the messages coming from the operator and it's clearly saying, yeah, I installed it, but I'm trying to get the public key. So where's the public key? The public key is here. I'm going to copy that and we're going to configure this at the GitHub side. We are now in the settings of the repository in the deploy keys section. GitHub allows you to configure these SSH keys per repository. So we're going to add the deploy key here. Remember, I just copied it. Uh, I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it Flux and then we paste in the key. Now I'm going to give Flux write access as well, because as you know, I also configured a Git user and Git email because I want to give write access to Flux as well. Let's do this and let's add the key. Confirm my password and the key is now added. Now that also means that we can see in our configuration here. So here again in the Flux operator, if I go inside the logs and I'm asking for uh, logs about um, Git, right? I'm searching for Git. It says here indeed event refreshed the URL. I'm going to do word wrap here. Um, one moment. Um, I'm going to turn on word wrap first that you can see everything. And then I'm going to search for uh, Git. And there you see now that indeed in this event refreshed, our URL is mentioned, the branch is mentioned, and the head is listed as well. That means it has access. That also means that it should have been able to go and look inside my config repo and see what to install. And what we see here indeed is that in the default namespace now suddenly, there's my Go app deployment. If I describe that Go app deployment, I will see indeed that the image Gbak go template 1.0.6 was installed. So the GitOps configuration and the GitOps operator was able to successfully connect to our uh, Git repo and then do the installation of our application for us. Now to show Flux in action, you have seen that one replica was installed of my Go application, so one pod was installed. Let's modify our deployment YAML and specify that we want to have two replicas running. So I'm now inside um, uh, GitHub and I'm doing that change directly here in the UI. That's of course not something we would do in reality, but let's now just commit this directly to main. So replicas has been set to two and let's commit the changes. When the changes have been uh, committed, what we can do is either wait for it to happen. Remember, I have a one minute interval, but there's also a command you can install, which is the flux CTL command. And that command has a sync option together with the namespace where your flux operator is, is installed in. You can actually trigger the sync to happen faster. So we do that now to speed things up a bit. And if we then go back into K9S, what you should see is that suddenly an extra container is created. We now go from one replicas to two replicas. Before we end the video, let's discuss why I gave Flux read write access to my repo. I did that because I want Flux to update the version of my image to, for example, a new version, let's say 1.0.7, whenever that new version is available in the GitHub container repository here, ghcr.io. Now, how do we instruct Flux to do that? We do that through annotations. So you see an automated annotation over there set to true. And then we have to tell Flux or instruct Flux uh, with, for example, a range of versions it should look for and then update automatically. So what I'm saying here with the tag dot go app, and by the way, go app refers to the name of the container in the deployment. We're saying to watch for semantic versions and everything that's within 1.0, 
for example, in this case, that means new patch releases. If there's a higher patch release available, install it automatically on the system. So what I will do is, and you won't see that, in the background, I will release a new version of the image, which is 1.0.7. And then we give Flux some time to pick that up and it will automatically install it. I just released version 1.0.7 of Go template. That's now the latest version of that image in GitHub Container Registry. And as you can see, there was a commit a minute ago that Flux V1 actually did. So the Flux V1 user I configured during the installation of the Flux operator has done a commit. And the commit message is here, auto release, and then the full name of the image. That also means that indeed inside the repository, I didn't make this change but Flux made this change for me here. It modified the image and set it to 1.0.7. That must also mean that the version of our application is updated here. Well, let's check this and just do a, a describe of the resource. And as you can see, indeed, this container or this pod now uses the 1.0.7 release. Okay, that's it for the update to GitOps on Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes. So remember, Microsoft is using Flux v1 today. Soon, hopefully in the summer of 2021, the Flux v2 preview will arrive and you can start using that new version. I hope you liked this one and see you again in some other video. Bye-bye.